Today is May 25th, 2006. I am Sarah Locker. It is a pleasure to conduct this interview for the Dakota Memories Oral History Project in Strasburg, North Dakota. Can you please state your full name, including your maiden name? Imogen Irene Chuan Schwalt. And when and where were you born? I was born February 28, 1929, at Linton, North Dakota, in a hospital. You were born in a hospital. Yeah. That's kind in of unusual. Stone, Stone Hospital, Dr. Uh, were all were you and your brothers and sisters born in the hospital or just no, you? I was the only one, the oldest and the only one. Was there a, a reason that you were born in the hospital instead of at home by a midwife? Just I have no idea. Okay. Because I was the first baby, I, I would okay. say. <laughs> okay. Important. <laughs> yeah, definitely. See, most people just weren't born that early. Or not born that early, born in a hospital. Usually it was in a... By a midwife. And the, the doctor was Dr. Wolverton. Okay. Did you ever hear any stories about your birth? Nothing out of the unusual, no. Okay. It was very, very cold when they t t took my mom to the hospital. And on, on the way home, there was so much water, they got took me home with a wagon and horses. And the horses were in water up to the belly. Oh, that's a lot of water. Yeah. Wow. It was in, of course, it was February 28th, and I got home in March. <laughs> oh, the snow melted. Yeah. Wow. What was life like growing up on the plains? Well, I actually, you know, I was little when we moved to town. I was in the second grade. Okay. And my parents, the, the, it was hard for them to get farms. In those days, there were a lot of farmers small farmers. Mm -hmm. So first we lived uh, west of town when I was born and then we moved southeast of town and that's where I started the first grade. And then we had to move again because that, that farm was sold and so they moved, my parents moved to my grandma Schwann's uh, summer kitchen. They fit you and your the parents, yeah. They just for the summer. Okay. Until they found some a place in town to live. They bought a lot and then they moved to smaller home. Do you to Strasburg here? Do you remember all it was like living in that summer kitchen for the summer? Well, uh, uh, you know, everything was new to me because I was little yet. We played a lot. And, farm. Grandma, my grandpa built up a basement. He was going to build a house on the Schwann farm. And then he died and that basement was never, they never built a house on top. So that was our playhouse in the basement. <laughs> oh, that be, that's yeah. different. Yeah. So we moved in the fall, we moved to town. We were just there for the summer. Okay. Mm -hmm. And being you, you moved to Strasburg, right? Yes. And being you lived in town, were you, did your parents send you often to church? Were they religious? Oh yes, very religious. We went to Mass every morning before we went to school. Yeah. Wow. And then take off. And then what school did you go to? St. Ben. The, the Catholic school? Yes. So then you had religion again all day? Not all day, but we had it <laughs> every day. You know, we kind of started school with prayer, and mm -hmm. then Father would come. Not every day, because he had to teach everybody that, you know, all grades mm -hmm. in high school. And, mm. What kind of religious activities did your family participate in? Well... Did you just attend church? Were there church festivities at all? Say like a names day? Oh, yeah, well, for one thing, the church fair was the big thing every fall. And then they also had uh, a ladies, young ladies' fidelity, which the younger group were in, and I was in that. 
What was that like? What did you do in that group? Well, it was the society. Okay. Uh -huh. And we had meetings. Once a year we had a nice uh, dinner. St. Mary's Society fixed it up. Cooked a dinner for us. And choir. We had a big choir. All the sisters, they were very, very good with uh, singing musical. When you say sisters, you mean the Catholic nuns? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, it was the first ones when I started school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What was that like going to school with nuns, having nuns as your teachers? Well, like I said, in the country school, I was so very little. Mm -hmm. The first grade, and in the second grade, we moved to town. So I was with the sisters. And then later on, though, uh, we got the Notre Dame sisters. Was there a certain group of sisters you preferred that you liked better? Well, yeah, that, that's like all <laughs> teachers, not just the sisters. It is, it is. <laughs> Which ones did you like better? The... Well, I have a lot of memories of both, you know, the Ursulines and, and the Notre Dames. Especially Mother Bernadia. And what was she like? Sister Euphemia. She was a little one. And actually when they went they left Strasbourg, she became the the mother of the mother house in Notre Dame. Oh wow. Uh -huh. Wow. Sister Eugenia, she was very musical and she would just dance and sing and Do they play any instruments? The piano and the organ. And Strasbourg had a pipe organ at the yes, time, too? Yes, they still do, but they don't use it anymore. It's still the same pipe? It repairs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they have a nice organ right now. Mm -hmm. How important was First Communion and Confirmation to your family? Very important. What would you do it's to celebrate it? It's just so different now. We got together at school and the band played in we met at school and we walked to church in the morning for the Mass, for our first Holy Communion. And then in the afternoon we came back and we got our scapulars. And come, and I, we, I made a first Holy Communion and a second Communion. The second time around we got to walk with the first Holy Communion. And we had our dresses and our veils on. What was and um, confirmation, well, you had your confirmation sponsor. And right now, mine is in the nursing home. She's still alive, my Aunt Rose. Sure. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's neat. Did, what did your family do to celebrate your First Communion and your... Um... Well, we had a special dinner for one thing and invite our sponsors, baptismal godmother, godfather, and now also the... the um, Confirmation sponsor. What did your mom make? You said she made a special. You had a special dinner. What was well, that? Well, yeah, it was you, Sunday. You had a chicken soup for sure. <laughs> but then she made specials like dressings and and salads. A little more of that. Did she Cookie make desserts? Now, what Coogan. would be a good? Oh, <laughs> and what kind? What kinds of kugan would you have? There's different kinds you can make. Uh, we had. Mostly what we call kind of the wedding crew. Okay. Uh -huh. The thinner once stuff. Once in a while, yeah. And once in a while, get a little topping on, like a prune. Okay. Should be two kinds. Okay. Um, what was Easter like? What would your family do to celebrate Easter? Well, when I was little, we didn't have Easter baskets. My dad would have a little hay and make little nests in a pail and set it outside and hurry up, hurry up. I think the Easter Bunny was out. You better go out and look. We're <laughs> <Or> outside. <laughs> Hoping to catch a glimpse. Yeah. <laughs> Would you look for Easter eggs? Yeah, we got the Easter eggs, maybe a few candies and stuff. And did you go to Holy Thursday, Good Friday, oh, Holy Saturday Mass? Okay, and I still go. 
Now, Mass, when you were young, would have been said in German. The homily would have been in German. Not? Some of the homily was Father o um, Augustine Fox, yes. Okay. Some was. But usually it was um, the High Mass and the Low Mass were the two Masses. And usually in the High Mass, the last Mass, was some German. You know, um, was, and, um, otherwise, it was pretty much the same. The low mass was in English, or it's English, uh -huh. and Latin. When I was in choir, it was Latin. We did a lot of Latin. Sang the songs in Latin. What were the differences between a high mass and a low mass? What, what made it a high mass? Well, they would have the glory in the high mass, and more, of the, you know, the more the singing was more. Which the, the low mass wasn't so much singing for one thing. Which one of the masses did you like to go to? Well, I sang in the choir, so I usually went to the high mass. <laughs> That's true. Now, when, when the church did switch to using only English, was anybody upset about it? Did the community? I think the older people were, but for my part, it's, it's all right. I go with along with a lot, a lot, but not everything. <laughs> but the high, the low, uh, the English was all right. I think it's better for to understand. Did you younger ones have a hard time understanding the priest? Did he use high German during his high German. Like, Could you follow along? Could you understand? Well, not the German, not too much. But my mother could read German, and my, my her dad, my grandpa Nicholas, he came from Russia, and he always got the Wanderer, and I don't know what the other paper was, he always got the newspapers. Uh, mm -hmm. So would your mother, after Mass, help explain the homily? Would you guys talk about what was said at church? Not really. Okay. What were funerals like? Like I said to him, you know, there, years ago there was no funeral home. So they and got the body and embalmed them and brought them to the homes. So it was a, a, a block up where I grew up. That's we had my grandma Shawan in the house and uh, my uncle Ed and Walker when they died. And people, usually two nights, people would sit with them and pray. They took turns. It was quiet. It, it was not, you know, now you go to a funeral and it's more like visiting a week. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. Would you guys, during the wake at the house, would you share stories about the person's life and talk about the person who had died? I think they did, but right, I mean, in the living room where, where they had the body, it was really quiet. Everybody just prayed by the body instead. Mm -hmm. And then what was the funeral ceremony itself like? It's a lot like it is now. Okay. Who would get the grave ready? Who would dig? Well, meh. My dad used to help do graves. Even if he didn't know the person that had died or wasn't related yeah. to the person that died? Sometimes, you know, it took quite a few men to do it because in the winter the ground was froze. And I remember they used to take old tires and, and take them to the cemetery and burn them so, you know, it would thaw up a little bit so they could dig. Oh, that, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. If some, like when your grandma died, did you discuss it at all as a family? Did you talk about death and what had happened? Well, yeah, we were with her. She, my this grandma, um, Sean, she wasn't in the room for a few years. They lived right by the cemetery. Um, my aunt took care of her, so I babysat her a lot. If they needed to go someplace, and, and uh, yeah, we had many. Many fond memories of her, Grandma Sean.
Mm. My grandma Nicholas, I didn't know that well because she died younger. Mm. How long did people mourn the death of a loved one? Well, I think longer than they do now even. I mean, they had something about dancing. You weren't supposed to dance for a year. And another thing, they wore black a lot, the ladies, for about a year. If they went out, like church or to, to I mean, a party, you know, and, you know they wouldn't dance. And... Wow. Now, since you were the oldest, what was it like being the oldest child? Well, I'm still like a mother to my brothers and sisters. <laughs> That's, that's how it was like, I guess. I don't know. And how many brothers and sisters do you have? I have three sisters and, four, and two brothers. There's okay. six in our family and babies. And then Sister Mary Miles, she's in the convent. She's next to me. She's next to me. Mm -hmm. Did you, were you a second mom the whole time? And what kind of chores, what kind of responsibility was that? Well, I, you had to be more like the babysitter. You were kind of responsible more, I, I would say. And how did you get along with your brothers and sisters since you were the oldest? I got along. I think that's why they still treat me like a mother. <laughs> I have a little respect. My, my youngest brother calls me once or twice a week. <laughs> he's, he's, re, uh, he's retired now. He still calls. <laughs> wow. Now, in school, going to St. Benedict's, what was your favorite class? What one did you, did you enjoy? Well, in grade school, I like reading and math. And, of course, religion, that was once a day when we started out. We knew our religion. And they taught it all to you in English? Yes. Okay. You didn't make any First Communion or Confirmation in German? No. no. Okay. okay. But my mother taught us our father, the Lutherans of the Aberdeen Kingdom. But I don't know it all anymore. Yeah. And I lose it after a while. Uh, what was school like here? What did you, what was a typical day of, of school at St. Benedict's? Like what time would it start? At nine. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah. Have recess, lunch around twelve? Mm -hmm. Right. We went home for our lunches at that time. There was no hot lunch. And the ones that came in from the country, they brought their lunch. Would you go back to play with the kids at lunchtime? After we done eating. Till it was nine. At one o'clock we started. What kind of games would you play? Oh, in the winter, Fox and Goose. What's that game? Snow, and you make a circle, and you cut it like a pie, and you run around. You catch each other. <laughs> we played marbles and checks. With a ball and checks. That's about it. Okay. Did you read a lot at home? Did you have books at home to read? We had some books, but we had her at, when we, when you got up to the higher grades, you had to read and the book reports. So I like to read, yeah. You made the book reports. Was this something you did about sixth, seventh grade, or was this something in high like school? That, uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay. Then you had to read certain books, like Little Women and something like certain books. Did you have to help your little brothers and sisters with their homework? So. Hmm. Um. So where's Margaret and I was. <laughs> Were you encouraged to go on to high school? Oh, yeah. That was important. Education was important to your parents. Yeah. And but, you know, they had ideas, too. My father thought. It, in the, those days, there were a lot of country schools, and there were a lot, you know, they needed teachers. So, he, 
thought you had a good teacher after you got out of high school. And uh, if you got, went to school, I went to Allendale for eight weeks, and then you got a certificate where you could teach, and then I taught one year. And I probably taught more when I got married. <laughs> Did you enjoy teaching? It was fun. Uh -huh. And you would have only been about four years older than some of the students when you taught? Yeah. If they were eighth grade? Yeah, I had a couple of eighth graders. They were taller than I was. I just couldn't find that picture. I think I've got it in Bismarck right now because we're having the Schwann reunion in August. Oh. And some of those kids that I taught, they were my, my cousins. So oh. we're going to run them off on the, the screen. What was that like teaching your relatives? They were good. I mean, they were, were disciplined. Mm -hmm. When you were going to school, did you ever have to kind of discipline your little brothers and sisters because they were acting up at all? Some, not, not very much. Just being kids? <laughs> Our dad was a little strict sometimes. They knew better. <laughs> what would be the punishment if if it got back to your dad? What would he have done? Well, I don't know. He would probably ground it a little bit. Or do some work, some special work. We had to help him. He um, was a road constructor, did road construction for the county. And we had to help him put on the snow plow or whatever. And the blades if you had to change them. And we had, just because we lived in town, we also had to go out and shop in the, in the summertime. Whose field would you go help shock? Uh, some friends of my parents and then our relatives too. What kind of chores did you have to do? Since you did live in the city, what what well, were your we daily chores? Running water. We had to carry all our water. And there were a lot of wells, but some people out there, the pumps were did, they didn't want, some were empty, got empty, there was no water. So uh, they started knowing that and they would to put some chains on and lock it so we could get water, else they'd run out. We had to walk way uptown, sometimes that one, there had no water anymore, we had to go maybe two blocks further. Then, we did have a sister with rainwater for washing, but for cooking. So you would. So that was, you know, every day, in the morning and at night time, you got those were the chores: carry out ashes, we had food on coal stoves. So would all you and your brothers? Well, would all the brothers and sisters that were big enough? All go to the well and help carry buckets back, or do you have well, to make multiple all trips? They're not big enough. They're not big enough. Yeah. Would you, how many trips would you have to make if there was only a couple of you going to get water? Yeah. Depend on what mom would cook and stuff, and how much water was there to drink. But, Some days more than other, and I suppose on bath night you'd have to carry a little extra water. Yeah. What was that like, uh, taking a bath? How often did you do it? we used the rain water. So would you take a bath about once a week? Usually twice. Saturday night, a better one. <laughs> and being the oldest, did you get the warm water? Well, I always had some to add. <laughs> that was nice for the younger ones. Mm -hmm. Usually the baby got, when we had a baby, got the first bath. Of course, they got a bath every day. They didn't need that much. Not really, no. Okay. Yeah. Now, you, you visited farms a lot and helped out at, on farms. What, what, what was the difference between living in town and living on the farm? Well, you know, when I was married, I got married to a farmer, so I knew about farming. But it's such a lot of different chores. Well, we don't milk in town. It actually, when my parents moved to town, there was a lot of people who had cows. That's where we got our milk. The people across the street had cows. 
the one across the street, Anna Mary Matter, they had cows. That's Lawrence Lawrence's. She had a cow. And this will be did our milk. So just people would have in their backyard one or two? No. Cow? Well, in the winter time, they had kind of a little barn. And they, you know, they had hay. But in the summertime, there was a fence out here where they could keep them. They called it the town fence. And then the kids would have to take the cow, bring the cow in at night. And then I think they kept it in overnight. But anyway, we had our cord jars and that's how we got it now. Interesting. Do you think there was a difference between kids who lived in town and kids who lived on the farm? Well, for sure. There's always more work for the kids than on the farm. Now the kids have a few jobs that they can pick up, like uh, mow the lawn and different things, you know, work at the care center at a certain mm -hmm. age, they can do that, and they can uh, babysit. Do you think you guys had a little more free time living in town than if you would have lived on a farm? Oh, I would say so. What would you do with that extra free time? We had good friends. Play together. When we were little, of course, that was, yeah. Get together at somebody's house and at play games? Yeah. Would you play the same games you played at school? Not really. When we, the, the little girls, they would just play with paper dolls and things like that. Where'd you get the paper dolls? You know what? We had a catalog and we cut some nice kids or little girls out or ladies. And then we'd cut dresses that we think would fit. We would just do the top of them, cut their feet and stuff. And we'd cut the dresses and keep the arms and the legs on and hook them onto the, the face, you know, onto shoulders. That was our play <laughs> Do you remember what game, or what, I'm sorry, what magazines you know, that would have been? It was maybe the Sears catalog. It was catalogs. And you get all this from. What would the boys do with their free time? How would they play? They play baseball, marbles. Now, you didn't have plumbing when you were a kid. Where would you go to the bathroom then? I would go to the toilet. And was that ever anybody's chore to clean and... Well... When it was getting too much, they dig a new hole and move the toilet over and take that, that dirt they, from the new hole and throw it into the, where they move the toilet into that hole. All right. Everybody had an outhouse. So you just, if you're playing at somebody's house, just use whichever one was there? You did. Did you ever brush your teeth as a child? That was a, how often would you brush your teeth? Once a day, in the morning. Oh, yeah. Did you have a garden? Big garden. What all did you, did your mother plant? We had a big lot with just potatoes. And then radishes, carrots, cucumbers, beets, everything. We, we always had a big garden. Lettuce. Cabbage. In fact, we had chickens in town. Everybody had chickens, too, in the backyard. And would the chickens just run around, or how were they? No, there was a fence and the chicken coop. Wow. Um, who had to help out with the gardening? We did. That was another chore we did. We had to pick weeds and hoe. And with the chores, since you were the oldest, did you delegate out the chores, or did your parents say who was? Our parents it? told us, "We're gonna do this today. Tomorrow we'll do that." Did your mom have more chores for you? Well, yeah, we had to clean house too. What was your What was your mom like? Was she? You said you, your siblings knew to listen to dad. Was it the same with mom? Mom didn't say much, but she'd say, wait till dad comes home to me. <laughs> and dad just had her talk. <laughs> Sometimes I know one of my brothers, he was kind of a restless. 
Don't tell Dad tonight. Don't tell. <laughs> Where would your mom prepare the meals? Is it? Would she prepare them in the kitchen, or did you have a summer kitchen as well when you no, were at home? Back in town, in the kitchen. You didn't worry about the house getting too hot in town? Yeah, we're going to do. Okay. And the windows. There wasn't any... Well, you know, um, we had a kerosene stove, which probably was better. You know, you didn't have to heat the whole house up. And when you were done cooking, you could turn, you could turn it off, and there was no more heat. Okay. So easy. And that's the way they, she baked her bread, too. You know, there was kind of an oven on the side of the kerosene stove. Okay. Where did you keep the food cold, or at least cool, in the summer? There, too. <clears throat> we had that sister. Mm -hmm. Ma had a big pail that she'd use for just that. And then she'd have, there was a rope and a pail, and she'd hung it down into the water. So, uh, so it stayed kind of cold. The kind of cold. The would, you know, would be cold. So it stayed But you know, you couldn't eat meat for two days. You had we go out of town and get fresh meat then, you know. Meat for Sunday, we got our meat on Saturday. Did you guys work at all on Sunday? Not really. My dad went fishing. He was a fisherman. He loved to play baseball. He was a baseball player. Did, did you kids play baseball too? Yeah, and what would you use for your bat and glove and That's ball? That's a story. Right across the street, we, the kids get to, they got together and we always had our ball games. And she all she used kind of like a a two by four, uh, you know, a heavy piece of board. And I was the catcher, and she swung and she hit me in the head, and I fell. I passed out, and my nose. We thought they'd have to, you know, take me. You know, they didn't take you to the doctor right away those days because it mm -hmm. just was huge. But I'll tell you, that was terrible. Uh, she swung, she, she did it with purpose. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't a very good bed. How did your mom and dad try to take care of your injuries since they didn't take you to the doctor? Well, I'll put, you know, cold water on or ice, but we really didn't have ice. In the winter you would have it, but then you didn't play baseball either. And you play snowball. <laughs> you did play a form of baseball in the winter? No. Oh, you didn't play snow. No. The, what snowball. Was, what's snowball? Make balls and throw them at each other. Oh, have snowball fights. Yeah, that's what we used to do after in school. <laughs> Did you ever build forts in the snow? And yeah. Mm -hmm. Fun. Uh, d Did your mom have any home remedies to help with headaches? To help if you didn't feel good? Yeah. To send her fix, and then she heated some flannel and put it in our chest. Or, and we had the flat irons for ironing, uh -huh. and she heat them up and put them on our feet. Sometimes you, you're sick and you got the chills, you know. And then she put us to bed with our gems and and put the, those flat irons for our feet, wrapping with towels and stuff, so it wouldn't be so hot. So that we'd sweat it out. Mm -hmm. That was the other thing she did. Did anybody ever have to go see a doctor? Oh yeah, we had to go to doctors. Especially my sister, she got the bad nose bleeds. She had the bad? Nose bleeds. Oh. She just would get a nose bleed? Mm -hmm. And then she had jaundice, she was jaundice. So, oh, we were taken to the doctor, but Did you go for regular doctor's visits? Or only when you needed to go? Usually when you needed to. Did you ever have to see an eye doctor or a dentist? Dentist. And how often would you go to the dentist? When we had bad toothaches. <laughs> did you ever have to go? I did. Yep. What was it like going to the dentist? Scary. Scarier than today, going to visit? It's true. Yeah. What kind of meals would your mom make? 
What was a typical dinner that she would make? We always had, not always. Meat was a really important dinner. And, um, and then we all liked something made with dough, flour, these all kinds of noodles, pastries. Was there a meal she made that you didn't like? Much like there, she was a good cook. She was very good. What was uh, your favorite meal she would make? I know there's one. It's called. Uh, we like the chenda and soup. What's that? Pumpkin. How would she make the pumpkin? Well, she'd scrape the pumpkin and then she makes it with you know the sugar and salt, and pepper. And then you make a, a dough, you have to roll it out, and then you fill, you fill it with a pumpkin. You make smaller pumpkin, like this, we call it lachenda. And when you roll it out, you fold it over, and you fill it. Oh, so it would be like a little pouch with pumpkin inside? A pouch, exactly. Do you still make it now? Oh yes, I got so many <laughs> freezer. <laughs> did you ever make ice cream? Lots of times. And what was it? How did you make the ice cream? I had a recipe. Uh, I think it was six or eight eggs, and it was made like a gallon or a gallon and a half, and sugar, and cream, half cream and half milk. And how? And what would you guys do to actually turn that into ice cream? What was your ice cream maker I had a like? Freezer. First, we had a hand that we had to turn. And it, we put the, the can in, inside, and outside was a bucket. And we put the outside with ice and put salt on so it freezes quickly. And then, and then you, you turn it, and then as it freezes, it gets even, it turns harder. And then you know it's done. Do you remember how long it took of turning it? Before? Depended how much salt we had in it. Okay. I still have an electric one now. So we, when we lived in the farm, I had ten children. The winter time we had ice cream all the time. We had cream and milk and eggs, so it was easy to make. When did you get married? Nineteen forty-eight, June fourteen. It's going to be 57 years. Wow. What was your wedding like? What we had a big wedding. Okay. My uh, father-in-law, he played a court and he played all the weddings down shore, just about all of them. And the family, his, his son Larry and Clarence and James, they, they had a band. So, he said he played for so many weddings, he has to invite all these people. But <laughs> so we had a lot of weddings. About how many people did you end up inviting? Well, at that time, I think it was about 300, which was a lot. Because we had our wedding started, the mass started at 10 o'clock in the morning. And then we right away went to the hall after that. And then we had a big dinner with soup and chicken and and pie, and you name it. What kind of soups and pies? Chicken. Chicken soup and chicken. And mashed potatoes and gravy, and a rice dressing, which is, you probably heard about rice dressing. Mm -mm. No? Mm -mm. I'm surprised. It's rice and hamburger. It's a very, we all make rice dressing around here for Thanksgiving or with chicken. It's just ground up hamburger that's been yeah, uh -huh. browned with rice? Well, you have to first, you have to brown it to saute it, with okay. onions and celery, and then you cook your rice and you mix that up. And okay, now I know what that is. Yeah. <laughs> Never knew what it was called. What kind of pies would be made? Well, they usually have like lemon or chocolate or whatever. Pies. And who and made pies. this meal? Well, not all the cooks didn't make it alone. You know, you had friends that, well, I'll help you make, I'll make some pies or whatever. And lots of cooking. 
cold, saw, heavy breathing, the hair, hair. And now, you had cooks. Were these family members that cooked the bulk uh, of it? We had two of them. Uh, Mrs. Madden over here, she was our, our relative who hired the cooks. But what they did, um, after everybody was done eating, you know, uh, and then they would go up, you know, the musician would play the chord and then they had this certain number they played, and then they had dishes, and they went around, and everybody put in, donated. And the first round went for the cooks, and then the second round went to the musician, the money. That's how they, that's the money they got for cooking. Nobody else would pay them, it was from there. That's the way. Do you know about how much they would they would have gotten paid about? Yeah, probably twenty dollars those days. Well nineteen forty eight, that's yeah. a good amount of money. And who would you have serve the food to everybody? We had to family members, the younger girls. Okay. And they were glad they they were glad to help. And because you know, they had to wash dishes and everything. They had to carry water. They didn't carry the water, but whoever had the wedding saw that there was enough water, they brought it with clean hands. And they had to heat water, you know. And they had big tubs that they used to wash the dishes in. And now 300 people, where did you find all the dishes? The, the hall, they had Okay. Uh -huh. Sometimes they had to wash up till the next tape so that was set up, you know, to go around. Oh, so somebody would be done eating before. Did you only have one meal for your wedding? No, then at supper time, then we had sausage and beef. And another, the dessert was cake for supper. Um, your wedding cake? No. Oh, just cake. Just cake. What would you do in between the first meal and the second meal? All afternoon, we danced. We danced and partied and we had drinks and it was a party. <laughs> and then after the second meal, did everybody go home? No, then they danced till one or two o'clock. They danced. Well, you know, they usually waited till about eight o'clock at night and they'd start dancing again. Mm -hmm. And everybody just be dancing away. And you know, the next day there was some of them came back, there was more party, and they cleaned up. Oh, you weren't part of it, it was just as they cleaned up, they made it a party. Did you and your husband go on a honeymoon at all? No, nope. but we did go just for our rodeo in McLaughlin one Sunday. After you got married? Mm -hmm. How did you two meet? So they're all going to be on here. <laughs> It doesn't have to be. <laughs> I was just curious, was that a dance I, or? No, I had a movie, for a movie. He asked me to go to a movie. And he just ran into you in town and asked you I to? I worked at the bowling alley when I went to school. Okay. And my cousin. And his brothers, they stayed in town when they went to school. And they were setting up pins. There was no automatic pin setters then. So they stayed at the Bahamas, the ones that owned the bowling alley. So anyway, we got to know each other. We worked at the lunch counter and the boys were setting pins. And then uh, my husband came in one night. We had planned to go to the movie, my cousin and I. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, he's going. We had to go to to see the movie. So we went to the movie, and it's how it started. And that led to the wedding, and then you had ten children. Yeah. Wow. Well, that was when I went to, I think I was a senior when I met him, really. I heard about him, but never, you know, he was in service. Okay. So I always thought he was too old. He was four years older than I was that a large age gap at that time, to have four years Not different? really. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And he served in the war. What was the war like for you? 
How, what, did rationing affect you at all? Well, I mean, we knew what it was all about because there was no sugar and different things we couldn't get. And I think even coffee or something. So the same things. Did your dad ever have to work for the WPA or the My CCC? Dad for the WPA when we moved to town. Yeah, he did. And then to make extra money for the family at night, there was a, a service station you know, just south of town, up in the southern part. And uh, he was a self-made mechanic. So nice, he would do mechanic work take cars apart and, and So your dad was a hard working man? He was a hard working man, very hard. And then later on he got in this road construction for Ennis County. And he worked there twenty three years. And then uh, about four miles from where we lived at the farm he was doing road work. And when we crossed the bridge the bridge broke down with his maintainer and hit the pickup hook down behind and that hard jolt. He, he was in shock and so he walked, he got himself up on the hill and he walked to a neighbor that was living there and then they called the ambulance to pick him up. So uh, he was so in shock he said he felt like nothing was wrong, but you know what, his spine was all the way cracked, and uh, he had a heart attack when that happened. But the but because he was in shock, he was able to walk through yeah. it? And how did he recover from he that? He was sick from then on. He was done. He had to go to Fargo, and then one time my husband had to take him to Minneapolis, and, but his, his spine was cracked all over him. I suppose there, this would have been about in the 50s when this happened to him? Mm. He died in 65. Okay, so in the yeah. 60s this happened? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, he never really recovered at all from that. Yeah. Being the oldest, what was your relationship like with your parents? I had a good relationship. Were they easy to talk to? Yeah, they were. But, you know, I think it isn't like it is. It was then. You have some more respect for your parents, and I don't know. We didn't go, you know, just go and and take off or what. There was no cars and stuff. Everybody has their own cars now, and we had good friends, and we were all. Classmates and lots of good friends. Mm -hmm. we'd, we'd have our gatherings like in the morning. I, wor I worked after school, that's where we all ended up. Played the Nickelodeon and then we danced <laughs> right after school. Jitterbug and bowl. And that was a typical outing when you were a teenager. Mm -hmm. Did you guys do anything else? Friday nights we always had a dance. and a nickel to get into, a dime to get in, or is it free to get into the dance? No, we usually had to pay a dollar. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh. With the, the 30s and the 40s, did you have a lot of hand-me-down? Well, did your sisters have a lot of hand-me-down clothes? Did you guys run out of shoes at all? Not shoes. My dad always saw that we had to you know clothes to wear, but my mom was a good seamstress and she you know picked clothes from somebody else and she'd take them apart and she knew how to piece together a nice pattern and sew dresses for us and it was really good. So you had a lot more homemade clothing, homemade. not yeah, I think everybody else did. You didn't buy as much. Uh, how often would you get new clothes? Sometimes for Christmas, even in the fall before school. That was it. 
that if you need to. What would you, what would be a typical outfit you'd wear to school? Well, it was real cool. We usually wore dresses, you know, till I was a senior, so we didn't wear, you know, slacks and stuff and pants. But sometimes when we were little, we'd wear pants, and when we'd go come to school, well, we had snow, snow pants at that time, then we would, you know, wear the dress, and, but then we'd take the pants off and hang them by our coats until after school. Did your school get cold in the winter? Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. Do you remember when the, your home got electricity? Yeah, and it was just a straight, you know, like the wire come down with a bolt. That's it. Is this in your parents' house? Mm -hmm. How did you react to the electricity? Well, we were happy to get that because I know when I used to babysit, we'd have the, uh, the, the kerosene lamp off. Then I, we wouldn't put it out all the way, just turn it down so there would be a little light if you were going to get up or so, if the baby would cry. So. And then with the light, you could just turn it Actually, on. Actually, when I when I got married, we didn't have electricity in that sod house I lived. How long did you live in the sod house? Uh, 27, 28 years. And until we moved to here. Okay. Did you put electricity in the sod house? Mm -hmm. You know, not all the farmers had electricity then. Our neighbors either. Unless you had uh, a generator. So it was typical in the 50s and even the 60s that farms yeah. wouldn't have electricity. So what was it like for you keeping the food cold and... Uh, About the same way it was before I got married. <laughs> you were prepared for it. Yeah. Do you remember the first car or truck that your family got? Yeah, it was, uh, I don't know what you call it, I get, uh, it was a little shabby or something. Is it about in the 30s, late 30s when you got the car, 40s? When we got married, we had a 46 Ford, but the years before, it was older, older cars. Just, what was that like, getting the car? Did that change your lifestyle at all, being you lived in town? Well, by then we had got a better car than just to uh, what it was before. So you would drive then to let Nick go to the movies in high school? Okay. Tell me about the rain. A bunch of us would get in a car and drive for, for the movie. You fit as many people into one car as you could? Yeah. What was the radio like for your family? How important was it? Well, we, we had one we, that was a battery radio. And you know, after it was so long, you know, it died out, you'd have to get a new battery. And it was about, the one we had was about eight by, by four high. And, and could you easily get another battery for it? Yeah, if you had the money. <laughs> So it was during the 30s that yeah. had the radio. What was your favorite program to listen to? In real legend. Um, Lawrence Ralph used to listen to on the radio too. I got on the radio first. Yeah. I suppose he was a special favorite in this town yeah. since he was from he's, Strasbourg. He's my dad's first cousin. So it was, everybody listened to the Lawrence Welk show. Mm -hmm. Ma Perkins was another one I liked. That was a, a day show. Okay. Like, mm -hmm. but, yeah.